989. Welcome to a 989 on Health Extra. These quick supplements should help ease any withdrawal symptoms you may experience while waiting for our next full episode. So, Mike, what's on today's agenda? We've received a bunch of feedback regarding our most recent episode, which covered the importance of washing your fruits and veggies before you eat them. Some of the feedback contained links to recent issues with E. coli and lettuce. It's not as if we knew this was coming and released the episode to connect with the news cycle. There are almost constant issues with food, especially since the food we eat comes from dozens of countries around the world. On any given day, if you do a news search for food recall, You'll never get a no-information-found message as a result. There's always a fresh news story about food dangers. But actually, most of the feedback we've received was about a glaring omission from the previous episode. E. coli and listeria are scary and all. But what about pesticides? Your episode didn't mention pesticides at all. How could you miss that? E. coli will be on some small percentage of plants, but pesticides are on most plants, right? Well, the truth is, we didn't forget to talk about pesticides. I chose to cut it on purpose. I was aiming for a quick episode on produce washing, and that's what we made. Okay, pesticides. What is a pesticide? Well, according to the National Institutes of Health, quote, a pesticide is any substance used to kill, repel, or control certain forms of plant or animal life that are considered to be pests. Pesticides include herbicides for destroying weeds and other unwanted vegetation, insecticides for controlling a wide variety of insects, fungicides used to prevent the growth of molds and mildew, disinfectants for preventing the spread of bacteria, and compounds used to control mice and rats. End quote. That covers a lot. All these different chemicals to kill bugs, fungus, bacteria, and bigger critters that might be interested in a nibble of carrots, corn, or cauliflower. Hmm, come to think of it, I have to wonder if cauliflower even needs pesticides. It's not as if the field mouse is bringing his own cheese sauce. Well, I'll leave that bit of research for you. I think a lot of us non-farming folks have a very quaint idea of what modern agriculture is. We might imagine that, unless there's some obvious problem in a crop field, it's largely left alone. But in fact, there's a lot of preventative pesticide use. We want to kill weeds before they can start to grow, so we spray. The plants we're trying to grow are still just seeds in the ground, but we're spraying now. A little later, maybe we've got some sprouting shoots, and we know a specific form of fungus is likely on our plant. So we're just going to spray to stop that before it starts. Better than losing the whole crop, right? But to me, this is a lot like taking antibiotics every day, just in case you might get an infection. And don't get me wrong, this usage of pesticides is what makes our modern grocery lifestyle possible you can almost guarantee good yields, overall that is, with all of these preventative methods. It's not personal, it's business, it's not evil, it's hardworking people trying to save their valuable plants so they can sell them. And if you think fresh produce is expensive now, imagine how much it would cost when half of all crops were lost due to bugs and weeds and mold. Pesticides are chemicals that kill so it's no wonder they can cause a wide variety of health problems for the humans and the livestock that eat them. The health problems which may or may not result from eating pesticides aren't the focus of this episode, but I want to mention that eating pesticides can contribute to cancer, hormone disruption, damage to the nervous system, damage to the reproductive system, damage to children in the womb, to breastfeeding children, and last but not least, damaging to our good friends, the bees. But wait. I'm supposed to be talking about washing fruits and veggies to remove pesticides. Okay, okay, there are hundreds of articles about thousands of different pesticides, so it's kind of hard to find a relatable entry point. Might be better to find a relatable plant. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do strawberries. There's a research paper on removing pesticides from strawberries that I found at the National Center for Biotechnology Information, which, of course, you will find a link to in the show notes. Okay, so the research paper on strawberries. They were testing the effectiveness of removing 16 different pesticides using a whole variety of different methods, two of which included using tap water and another boiling water. I mean, I could talk about the science fiction ultrasonic ray gun method they used. Yes, really. But I don't think you'll find that gizmo in the Sharper Image catalog. All right, 
this strawberry article has a lot of technobabble, so I'm going to paraphrase it. As in the case of washing with tap water, the highest reduction was also observed for non-systemic insecticides, which act only when they come into direct contact with plant tissues and are not transported to other plant parts. Therefore, these residues responded well to a simple washing. In contrast, systemic pesticides, which penetrate to deeper tissue layers of the strawberries, were more difficult to remove. That last part is pretty important, and to rephrase it, as a plant is growing and is sprayed with chemical after chemical, these chemicals are absorbed into the plant from the leaves, from the roots, and no amount of washing will remove these chemicals. Imagine trying to remove the vitamin C from a lemon. That's not to say washing doesn't remove pesticides. It does, and you should. According to the research paper on strawberries, washing with tap water for 5 minutes removed around 20 to 70% of pesticide residues, while boiling for 5 minutes removed around 40 to 90% of residues. You might ask, who boils their strawberries? And the answer is, some folks out there are still making their own fruit preserves. And that thought makes me happy. Now, I can't swear to the accuracy of this source, but there's a website, whatsonmyfood.org, that breaks down what you might expect to find on your various types of produce. I've included a link to their page on strawberries if you're interested. Of course, this kind of thing can vary widely. The techniques used in Mexico will differ from those used in Spain or in Turkey. All of this is the sort of information that makes a person want to grow their own food. But be mindful. Many potting soils you can buy at your local garden supply may have pesticides already mixed in, so be sure to read the fine print and know what you're getting. If you're interested in hearing about organically grown foods, check out our episode number 34 from October of 2017. Enjoy your plant scrubbing. I know I will. That's all for now. You can find links to read more about today's topics at level989.com. Why not take a moment to rate or review us in iTunes, or give us a mention on social media? We can't help everyone if they don't know we exist. Don't rely on us as an alternative to medical advice from a professional healthcare provider. For the full disclaimer, please see our website. Thanks for listening, and now, go health yourself. Go health yourself.